Welcome back friends. In this video, we will do a hands-on with Amazon RDS. Amazon Relational Database Service, Amazon RDS, is a collection of managed services that makes it simple to set up, operate, and scale relational databases in the AWS cloud. It's very difficult to cover all the options in this tutorial as there is a lot. The main objective is to get a general idea of RDS and how it works. From there on, it should be easier for you to build your knowledge further on RDS. That being said, let's click on Create Database. It may take a few seconds to come up. On this page, we have two options, Standard Create and Easy Create. For Easy Create, use the recommended best practice configurations. In fact, it pre-populates all the best practice configuration options. On the other hand, for the Standard Create, you set all the configurations to customize everything. For this tutorial, let's choose Standard Create. For the database engine, we have six options. We have Amazon Aurora, we have MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres SQL, Oracle, and Microsoft SQL Server. These are all standard, except Amazon Aurora, which is AWS proprietary RDBMS. In this tutorial, we're going to choose MySQL to launch a very simple to manage MySQL database using RDS. And for these options, defaults are okay, as we are doing this just for the tutorial purpose, not for a production database. And for the engine version, there are a lot of options available to us. We will use the version that is recommended, but it really doesn't matter for this demo. And for templates, we have production, dev test, or the free tier templates to launch our MySQL RDS instance. Let's choose free tier. That way, we will not be charged for this tutorial. For availability and durability, whatever default is given is fine. For settings, DB instance identifier, the default option is database one, which is fine. Credential settings. The master username admin is fine. And for the password, I'll enter password. Whatever password I provide doesn't matter as I'm going to delete it once the demo is over. For the database class, burstable class dbt2 micro is okay. Because this is free tier eligible, there are other options available as well, but the default option is fine. Let's scroll down. We have some settings for storage. Let's have a minimum value, which is 20 gigabyte of general purpose SSD GP2 storage, as this is for learning purposes. And for storage auto scaling, the default option is checked. This means it can scale automatically as needed up to one terabyte. For connectivity, these default choices are okay. For VPC, the default is okay. Subnet default is fine. So where do we want to launch the database? We will run in the default VPC and in a subnet group for public access. Do we want to have public access to our database or not? Well, you need to specify yes if you want to be able to connect to your database from your computer and you don't have direct connectivity to AWS. I think this should be the case for you, so we'll keep public access to yes. If you select no, then RDS doesn't assign a public IP address to the database. In that case, only Amazon EC2 instances and other resources inside the VPC can connect to your database. For the security group, create a new one. It's better to create a new security group than to choose a default one. That goes well with the idea of the principle of separation. We can use the default for reference purposes. It's better to create a new one. That being said, let's create a new security group. I will call it my RDS demo. And for the AZ, it's going to be no preference. This is fine. Scroll down, defaults are okay. Now, how do we want you to authenticate your database? Using password authentication or password and IAM database authentication or password and Kerberos authentication. We will keep it very simple and use password authentication. Now here we have the estimated monthly cost since we are using RDS in free tier. In the free tier, as of this recording, RDS is available for 12 months in which we get 750 hours of Amazon RDS in a single AZ full month for the db.t3.micro instance or db.t4g.micro instance with 20 gigabytes free of SSD, 20 gigabytes automated backup, and any user-initiated snapshots. 
As you can realize, this free tier option is good for learning RDS. Let's click on Create Database. The database is being created and it is being created in the Northern Virginia region. As the database is being created, let's go through the other things. The thing you can do is delete it but let it run. Other options also exist. Stop, Reboot, Take Snapshot, which is now disabled because the database is still being created. Let it get created. Still, it is coming up. We have a connectivity and security tab here. Right now, we do not see any value under this tab because the RDS instance is still getting created. And we have a DB identifier. And we have this security group, if you notice. Here in this security group for inbound rule, port 3306 is open from my machine, which is good. The database machines usually don't have access from anywhere. They typically allow connections from application servers. And for the outbound rule, it allows connections to everywhere, which is good. Let's go back here. The database is still being created. Let's look into the monitoring tab. If you look into monitoring, since this is a managed service, we have some information about CPU utilization, DB connections, free storage space, free memory, and write IOPS. Read IOPS, which is great. In the configurations tab, we can see various configurations. Under maintenance and backup. There are a few snapshots. This snapshot is available. This is automated. I will delete it um, because this was created today. I will delete all of them later on once this demo is done. Okay. This is my previous snapshot. I will delete it later on. And tag. I don't have any tags right now. So let's go to the database. It is still backing up, right? It has not been created yet. Still, it is backing up. It might take a few minutes to come up. Um, this is the endpoint. We will use this endpoint to have connectivity with the database. Okay? Let's copy this and let me bring this MySQL here, right? To set up the connectivity to test it from my SQL workbench. Let me give this connection a name. Okay? And uh, this is the host name, right? And this will be our admin. Password. Enter the password. Let's see whether the connection comes up or not. Okay? And the connection was successful. If you click here, there you go. Right now, I can connect from my SQL Workbench to the database. As you can notice, this comes from the MySQL running on RDS. Okay? This is your RDS instance. The status is backing up and soon it will show as available. Let's wait. Now the database is available. I can go here and I can click on take snapshot. Okay. Let's name it. For example, demo snapshot. Okay, let's click here. Okay. This demo snapshot is being created. Ignore this one. I have created it earlier. I will delete this one later. But this is a demo snapshot that I just created. Okay. If I go here and I can say, for example, if I select this one, okay, I can migrate this one. But I can't because right now the snapshot is still getting created. Let the snapshot get created. It will take some time. And on the snapshot, we have different options, automated, shared with me, and public. You can make a snapshot public. Backup service, export in Amazon S3. You can export it to Amazon S3. You can share it with someone. You can automate it. And this is the manual one that we are doing right now. Okay, let's see how long it takes to come up. Let's come here in this case, say, for example, we have these tables, right? 
if you want you can you can create your own database right click here and I can create for example customer database this customer database will be created here now we have created this customer database into the RDS instance that we launched on AWS right I can go and I can create table I can say create table Let's click on the create table. It's asking for password. Let me enter the password here. Our first column is customer ID. For the second column, let's enter customer name. Let's enter customer address here. Okay. I think you're getting the idea. I can say here, apply. This is the script. This is the DDL, right? Customer database, customer table. There are three columns in this table and the primary key is the customer ID. Let's apply it. Close here. As you can notice these database operations, I can perform from the MySQL workbench to the database that is running on AWS. Okay, let's refresh this and see if the snapshot is available or not. It will take some time. The snapshot is still getting created 23% progress. Okay, we'll wait for the snapshot to complete and then we'll follow it up again. Okay, now the demo snapshot is available. Now, what I can do, I can click here and I can restore a snapshot. Okay, so this would allow me to create a new database out of this snapshot. And the reason why I would do this is that, for example, if I want to create a bigger database or create a copy of this database, right? And so on. Okay. And then restoring snapshot would be a way to do it, right? You got it. I'm going to cancel it. I'm not going to click on it, but you got the idea, right? Whenever we need to create a copy of database or create a bigger database, we can just use it. Or for example, for backup recovery. If something fails, something goes wrong with your real database, you can use the snapshot to recreate the database from your backup. The other thing you can do from the snapshot is that you can copy the snapshot to some other AWS region, a different region. This would be extremely helpful if you want to restore the database to another AWS region. And for example, I have this database in the Northern Virginia region, right? Suppose I want to create this database and say in Mumbai region, I can copy this snapshot to Mumbai region. And using that snapshot, I can create the database in the Mumbai AWS region. You got the idea. Another thing you can do is you can share this snapshot with other accounts so that they can restore this database directly from your snapshot, right? For example, if I want, I can share the snapshot with some other account. They can create this database into their account, right? So sharing it, copying it, restoring it, you can migrate it, you can export it to S3. You can delete the snapshots, all these options are provided. Okay, so that's it for RDS. It was a quick overview. What we did, we have created this RDS database and we looked up different options for using Snapshot. As you can see, managed services have a very good impact on how we use them on the cloud, right? We can very quickly create this database on the cloud. Just imagine comparing it with creating a database on-prem, right? How long it takes. You need to get a new machine or if you have a machine you need to install the database software and then create the database and set up the backup recovery and other related tasks such as security patching etc all these database related tasks there is a lot of work but as you notice the cloud has simplified database creation and its management so much right in a few minutes i launched the mysql database and i could connect to the database from mysql workbench as well right it's very cool let's do cleanup that way you do not get charged. 
Let's start with the automated backup. I will delete both of these guys. Okay, I will delete them. These are gone. Now what I'll do is delete the database. Okay, let me delete this one. I'll say delete me, that will delete it. Another thing that I need to do, I need to delete the security group as well. Once the database is deleted, then I need to delete the security group as well, right? So that we clean up the whole thing. That's it for this lecture. I think you got the idea of how to set up RDS on AWS.